welcome back everyone. I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and we're gonna start off this playlist by looking at a bunch of the custom gestures we can add to our Swift UI application. And in this video, we're gonna look at the long press gesture. Now, the long press gesture works a lot like the tap gesture, which we've previously done, except the tap gesture, when you tap on it, the action occurs immediately as soon as you tap on it. Whereas with the long press gesture, we can set an amount of time that we need to tap and hold or press and hold before the action executes. We're gonna look at a couple very basic implementations of the long press gesture, and then we're gonna end the video with a custom real world example of when you might use this in your app. All right, so welcome back everyone. Let's open up Xcode and create a new project. So create a new Xcode project. I'm gonna assume if you're watching this course, you already know the basics of Xcode and you followed some of my other courses. So let's just jump in this. Let's create an iOS app. Double click on the app. Product name. This is the name of your app or your project. So I'm just gonna call it Swiftful Thinking uh, Continued Learning. And the team I'm just gonna keep as my personal team. It's okay if yours says none organization identifier doesn't really matter because we're not pushing this to the app store so let's just make sure that the interface is swift ui the life cycle is a swift ui app and the language of course is swift we can uncheck all of these so uncheck use core data we're going to actually use core data in this course but we're going to do it ourselves so we don't need the template boiler code for now uh, so once this is all set let's click next Go ahead and find the folder where you want to save it on your computer and then let's click create. Go ahead and click resume on the canvas. Let's make this full screen. I'm going to hide the inspector on the right side because we don't need it. Let's change our device from just a regular iPhone. Let's click on the top here. It says iPod touch. Let's change it to an iPhone 12 because it looks much better. Looks good and let's get coding let's create a new file for the code we're going to do in this video let's right click the navigator create a new file it's going to be a swift ui view and let's call this a long press gesture bootcamp go ahead and click create once you're inside this click resume to make sure the canvas is all connected and let's get coding all right let's start out real basic here on this hello world let's add a background let's give it a color dot gray and before the background let's give it some padding some extra horizontal padding after the background let's give it a corner radius of 10 and let's add some animation so at the top we'll say at state var is complete of type pool and we'll set it equal to false. And then for our text here, let's just change the text whether or not it's complete. So we'll say is complete, question mark. This is a ternary operator. And if it's complete, let's add some text that just says completed. And we'll do otherwise. If it's not complete, we'll say um, not complete. Very simple. And the background color, let's also change. And the background color, let's also change. We'll say is complete, question mark. If it's complete, let's do color.green. Otherwise, we'll do color.gray. Very, very simple. Click resume on the canvas to make sure it's connected. And let's give this a very basic on tap gesture, which we've done many times. When we tap it, let's toggle the is complete dot toggle. I click play on the live preview and I click it and it toggles and this is perfect this is exactly what we coded uh, but you'll notice that the tap gesture occurs as soon as you tap on it and sometimes you don't want actions to occur unless you're actually pressing and holding on an item for a certain amount of time so that's where the long press gesture comes into play so instead of just immediately happening we can make it so that we tap on this for maybe two or three seconds before it animates so Let's get rid of the on tap gesture. Let's comment that out. And let's call dot long on long press gesture. And I'm going to use the first one right now. And we're just going to do is complete dot toggle. 
And so for the very basic on long press gesture, if we now click on this very quickly, like a tap gesture, it's not going to toggle. But if I click and hold for about one second, it will switch. So that's the long press gesture. Very simple, but it does make sure that your user is actually clicking and pressing on an item. They're not just quickly tapping on it. And we can customize this as well. We can open up the parentheses here and add some of the parameters for a long press gesture. And I'm gonna use right now the minimum duration. So we'll do minimum, minimum duration, colon, and let's leave it as one. So this means we need to press this for at least one second before this will toggle. So if I click it, it doesn't work one second and it will work. If you want your user to hold something for three or five seconds, you can change it. So I can put this to five seconds. And now when I run the simulator, I'm gonna have to click and hold this for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. I counted too fast. Five seconds, and now it finally changes. And we can take this even further. We can add another parameter here with a comma. I will start typing in maximum distance. And we can change the maximum distance here. And I'll put it as uh, maybe one for right now. So it's nice and short. And the maximum distance is the distance that you're moving your finger when you're clicking on it. So right now at one, it's only going to register if I click and hold in one single spot and don't move my finger. And it works. But if I click and hold and move my finger more than one away, even if I continue holding, it's not going to work because it canceled at the maximum distance. And this is used more for if users are like clicking on something that's maybe hard to click and you want to give them some extra room. So if I change this to like 50, I can click and hold and move my finger within 50 points and it should still work. So that's what the maximum distance is. All right, I'm going to hide the navigator quick because we're not using it. And let's finish up this video with a real world example. So. I'm gonna create a whole new, so let's create a whole new view here. I'm going to highlight all of this and just comment it out for now. And I'm just gonna move it all down because we're not using it. And on the screen, let's add a V stack. Open the brackets. And at the top of the V stack, I'm gonna add a rectangle. All right, let's give it a Let's give it a height. So we'll give it a frame with a height of 55. Let's give it a background of color dot gray. And I'm going to give it a fill of color dot blue. All right. And right now the rectangle is the same size as the background. And that's why we can only see the blue, but let's change the, the width of the rectangle to be shorter. So we'll do dot frame max width and let's change this to maybe 100 and now after we have a rectangle let's change the frame of the background so we'll call dot frame here and we'll do max width of infinity all right so now we have our background that's gray our rectangle is blue and let's push it to the left in this big frame so the frame here we can call alignment dot leading and what we're gonna do is basically animate the width of this rectangle while we're clicking it down. Because if I change this width to maybe 200, we can see that it looks kind of like it's loading. I go to 400 and we can come back down and go 300, 200, 100, all the way down to zero. All right, so let's leave it at 10 for a second. And let's add two buttons underneath it. Let's do a text, uh, maybe click here. Let's give this a foreground of white. Let's give it a background of color.black. Let's add some padding. Let's give it a corner radius of 10. And on the right of it, so let's actually put this in an H stack. On the right of this text, let's add another text. I'm going to use the same variable, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. And this one's going to say uh, reset. All right, now when we click, we wanna perform an action so this blue becomes complete. So on our click here, let's add a dot on long press gesture. We're gonna use this new 
long completion here that we haven't used yet, which has the minimum, the maximum, pressing, and perform. All right, now the minimum we already know, let's call it one second. The maximum we already covered, and that will be, let's just do 50. It's not very relevant right now. Now we have the pressing, and let's press enter on the pressing. And you'll notice that it gives us a Boolean, and we're gonna call this is pressing. And from what I can tell, this is pressing gets called twice. Once when we click down onto the button, and then once when we lift our finger up off of the button. And then this perform action gets called at the minimum duration after one second. So let's put some comments here. This is from the start of press to the min duration. And this action is at the min duration. All right, so now let's start with the is pressing. So we'll say if is pressing, open the brackets. So if we are clicking down on this click here button, what do we want to happen? Well, we want to toggle the is complete and we want to do it with animation. So we'll do with animation dot, let's do uh, ease in out because I like that one. And let's use the duration and let's give it the same duration as our press. So we'll do one second here open the brackets and we'll call is complete dot toggle and now our max width let's animate it so we'll say is complete if it's complete let's make it infinity so it's as big as possible in that frame and we'll say otherwise zero so if I click on this now it should start to animate and we saw that and that looked really good I'm gonna do it one more time for you guys I'll stop the preview one more time when I click and hold on this it's going to animate it looks like it's loading and now if i get to this end if i hold it for one full second and it gets here i want to actually change the color of this blue to green so that ending action after one second is called in the perform so let's create a new state variable for that let's call at state var uh, is success of type bool equals false and in the perform, we will do with animation dot uh, ease in out. We we'll use the default one without any extra uh, duration. Open the brackets and we'll call is success equals true because it will be definitely be successful when we get to this point. And then on the fill, we're just going to say is success question mark. And if it's successful, we'll do color dot green. Otherwise, color dot blue. Let's check this out. If I click and hold it for one full second, it now completes and then animates to green, so the user knows that this was successful. And now, of course, we have a situation of what if I click and hold on it, but I let go maybe halfway. I want it to animate back. I don't want it to continue animating to the success. Right, so that blue line, I want it to bounce back if I didn't complete it. Because right now, if I just click this, it just keeps going even if I stop and let go of the button. So let's handle that now. So we'll say, if is pressing, do this. Else, so if I click up, so if I let go of being pressing, this action's gonna run. And I noticed here that this action kind of runs at the same time as the perform if we get to one second. So let's give it a little bit of delay just so that we can first check if it's successful or not. So we'll add a delay with a dispatch queue dot main dot async after. The delay will be dot now plus, let's just do 0.1 seconds. So a very, very slight delay. And then we'll press enter on this execute here. And first we wanna check if it is successful because if it's successful, we wanna leave it all the way on the right side. But if it's not successful, we wanna bounce it back. So we'll say if, uh, not is success open brackets and remember that exclamation point is the opposite so if success is true this is saying if success is false and if it's false we want to animate is complete back down and as I say this I realize that we used is complete dot toggle but every time we're pressing it is complete should be true so let's just make sure that this is actually true and here we're gonna do with animation dot ease in out and let's just use that default without any extra duration open brackets and we'll say is complete equals false all right now if i click and let go within one second it should bounce back all right see how cool that is 
click a little bit it's bouncing back but if I click and hold for one full second it should now stay and let's just finish this up with our with our reset button down at the reset button let's add a dot on tap gesture and when we reset let's just put is complete equals false and is success equals false all right now we can play around with this we can complete it we can reset it and this all looks really good all right guys that was pretty much it for this video the long press gesture isn't used very often in a lot of apps it's used more often in like games where you have to like click and hold something for for a second or two before maybe you get some points or you get your reward um, but this was just a quick example introducing you guys to how to use it just changing the color from blue to green isn't really that special but but sometimes in your app you might want to add a long press gesture if maybe you click it and then there's some animation and then after that animation it segues or something else pops up on the screen thank you guys as always for watching i'm nick this is swiftful thinking and i'll see you in the next video